Hi everyone, today we're going to do a prac that's a little bit different to the normal kind of pracs that we do. It involves designing and building a machine. But before we begin, we have to do a quick history lesson. In 1915, pretty much all of Europe was at war. Germany and the Austrian-Hungarian Empire were fighting the British and the French here on the so-called Western Front, and they were fighting the Russians on the so-called Eastern Front around here. Up until that time, it was the largest and most widespread war in history. We now refer to it as World War I. Turkey decided to join with Germany and attacked Russia and Ukraine from the south. Russia asked Britain and France for help, but to reach Russian ports in the Black Sea with supplies, British and French ships had to travel up, let me zoom in a bit, through the Straits of the Dardanelles into the Sea of Marmara and then up past Constantinople, the capital of Turkey which the Turks now call Istanbul. However, this was impossible because the Turks had placed cannons along the entrance to the straits, so that if any ship tried to sail in, it could be blasted out of the water. British, French, Indian and Canadian troops, along with the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, the Anzacs, decided to land on the Gallipoli Peninsula and take over the cannon positions. The plan was to then send a naval fleet to Constantinople and knock Turkey out of the war. However, the military campaign was a complete disaster from our point of view. The beaches where the troops landed on April 25th, 1915, what we now call Anzac Day, were a little like this one. With the Anzacs down here and the Turks up there, it was very hard for the Anzacs to gain much ground. After eight long months and after tens of thousands of troops on both sides died, the Anzacs decided to withdraw. Now the problem with withdrawing from a battle is that if the enemy army realises that you're withdrawing and that you're packing away all your cannons and guns and stuff and that there are fewer troops left to fight, then they typically launch an attack which leads to even more casualties. So how could the Anzacs withdraw without letting the Turks know that they were withdrawing? Enter Lance Corporal William Scurry. Scurry, an Australian soldier born in Melbourne, came up with a way of firing a rifle automatically long after the soldiers had left. Basically, a can was tied with a string to the trigger of a rifle and another can was placed above this can. The top can was filled with water, but a small hole in it allowed the water to drip into the bottom can. This can got heavier and heavier and eventually pulled on the trigger with enough force to discharge the rifle. So, a large number of these drip rifles were set up and while the Anzacs were escaping under the cover of night, the Turkish troops thought that they were being shot at. All night long, the guns were going off randomly. Bang, 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 bang. It was the only time in history that an army was able to withdraw from a battle without a single casualty. Before Scurry came up with his idea, it had been estimated by the commanders at the time that of the 80,000 troops at Gallipoli, some 30,000 or so would die during the retreat. But in the end, no one did. William Scurry was responsible for saving tens of thousands of lives. Which brings us to today's task. We don't have any rifles, of course, but you, in groups of two or three, are going to build a device that automatically bursts a balloon using retort stands, boss heads, clamps, sticky tape, rulers, string, plasticine, Icy pole sticks, straws, pins, and cups. You have to build your device, pour water into the cup that has a hole in it, and then stand back. The device should then do the rest and pop the balloon automatically after about 15 to 30 seconds. We don't want to wait overnight. To get you going, I'm going to show you a really bad way of doing it. It's bad because it's unreliable and it's difficult to set up. I first make a little wooden seesaw and then balance the receiving cup on it. I then take another icy pole stick that has a pin stuck on it with plasticine and balance it over the other end. The theory is that as the cup gets heavier, as water drips into it, it overbalances and tips the pin over the table. But as I said, this design is unreliable. This is the first fail, and after a little adjustment, this is the second fail. 
It took three tries before the stick with the pins on it fell, although I didn't have a balloon in place for this demo. Now not only is this part of the design unreliable, but quite often as the stick falls, it spins and the pin doesn't even hit the balloon. Now I've been doing this activity with my students since 1990, and in that time I've seen literally hundreds of different designs that work. Quite often, I see groups build their Gallipoli balloon bursters that are similar to ones built by previous groups, but I'm constantly surprised by how often I see completely new and innovative designs. Now, some rules and tips. A little balloon will not easily burst. The rubber they make these things from is really stretchy. A big balloon, though, is really easy to pop. The water has to be poured in and then the team has to stand back. You can't be standing there adjusting something or holding something because if you do, the enemy soldiers are going to come and shoot you. The balloon has to be secured in some way so that if, for example, some water drips onto it, it doesn't move out of position. I recommend some retort stands or some chairs. Not that many groups have success on their first attempt. Be prepared for a few failures first. A common problem is that the water dripping from the cup doesn't always fall straight down. Have the top cup fairly close to the bottom cup. If you're successful, you have to do it again to prove that it wasn't a fluke. The floor will probably get wet when your balloon burster goes off, so just be careful as you're walking around the room because you don't want to slip and fall. And finally, you're not going to be given a balloon until you've come up with a design that you've tested and which your teacher thinks is sufficiently developed. But remember, there aren't any real rules other than the rule that says once you've poured the water, you've got to stand back and let your Gallipoli balloon burst pop the balloon automatically after a small delay. So, once your teacher gives you the go-ahead, you can begin.